Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I have here a Kubota V1105. I'm going to uh, check it out and give it a bench test and see if it works. I purchased it on Facebook Marketplace for $400 as a core as is. The previous owner said that it was smoking but it did run. So we are going to check it out and if it works we will put it in my water well toilet machine that is purchased. If not, we will rebuild it and then we'll put it into our water well toilet machine. But um, right now we're just going to do a bench test and we'll go through each process step by step and crank it up and see if it's going to work. My Kubota 1105. Okay, the first thing we did was we hooked the fuel up. Okay, we have the uh, feed line with this pump right here. I prefer to use electrical fuel pump so we don't have to worry about getting it uh, primed. So it has 12 volts. It goes to the battery over there. And the red one goes to the positive. The black one goes to the negative. I'll connect them on when I'm going to start it. You see the bigger hose here is the feed hose. goes into the pump. And you look at the pump, it'll have an arrow on it showing your direction of flow. I have an inline filter so I'll know when it's got fuel in it and check and make sure it doesn't have any water or trash in, in getting into the engine. And it goes up into the mechanical fuel pump, which we will not be using. It will just go bypass that. And then it goes in there and goes through the engine. And over here is the return line. And uh, with the return, to make sure you got fuel going to the engine, we'll come over here and we will connect the negative of the battery. And that will turn on the electric fuel pump. And you should you hear the move gurgling. See, you have fuel coming back from the return line. So that means you are getting fuel going into the main line. And if you look at your clear inline filter, this filter is a uh, 3302 number at Napa. It's an inline fuel line. You can see if it gets dirty. You can see if you got fuel, dirt in your fuel. So you can actually change it out if you want to. So that one will go in there. It comes, goes through the pump, out through here into the mechanical fuel pump, and then from there it goes straight into the engine. This is a bleeder tube, which we do not have to use because we got it going to the return. You see now these are the injection lines. They are disconnected because we are going to purge out all the air once we start cracking it, cranking it. Okay, and uh, this right here is the fuel shutoff solenoid right here. Normally you would put 12 volts to this, and this particular valve is mechanically uh, shut off. So you know you would have to put 12 volts here to pull it out to let the fuel go into the injection pump. But we are going to remove this screw and the screw on the other side and just pull it out, and that will make it engaged. We pull this out and fuel will be able to flow. That will unlock it. And then to cut it off, we just stick your finger in there and push down on the lever, and it will cut off. So we'll take this off before we try to start the engine. And then we'll come over here. This is the water pump. We don't want the water pump to run dry. So we'll take the belt off. And so when we crank it, the water pump will not be turning. And that should be all we have to take off of it. There was one more thing. This particular uh, engine came off of a tractor. I can tell because you got your hydraulic pump here. And uh, we'll have to make sure we don't run it too much because we don't want to damage the pump. We'll lubricate it. We could take it off, but I'm going to use it for the water well drilling machine, so I'll leave it on. I'll just uh, make sure we put some hydraulic oil in there to make sure it stays lubricated. Don't run it for very long. Now, this came off of a tractor, so it came with this. It came with this right here, and it came with this plate right here from a tractor. Now, since it was an 05 series, it's 1105. I had a light tower that was a 905, which had this bell housing and a generator on it. So I took the bell housing off the 905 light tower, I took off the flywheel, and I took off the starter. Because I did not, this engine did not come with a starter. It came with this, this, and this, but I could not directly mount this starter to that. So I took off the flywheel, and then the, and the bell housing, and the clutch mechanism off of that, this one here, and then swap it out. Put the ones from the 05 series in the light tower here. All the 1105, 1305, 1505, the SAE5 here will fit. Okay, next step, 
I'll go ahead, I'll take this right off, I'll take off the film belt, I'll come back, and then what we'll do is we'll run 12 volts. These are your glow plugs right here. This one, this one, and this one. That heats up your cylinder when you put 12 volts. We'll run 12 volts from the battery, positive, over to the glow plug, heat up for a few seconds, and then what we'll do is we'll jump off the back of the starter here there's two wires we'll jump from the wire inside of here to this wire and that will crank it over as long as the fuel induction solenoid is removed it should start right up okay what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to remove the fuel shutoff solenoid because with the fuel shut off solenoid installed, it will not produce any diesel until it's energized by 12 volts. So if we remove it, the fuel will flow through manually. You will not have to in install 12 volts to get the f to activate the fuel shutoff solenoid. So I'm going to pull this out. One of them was already missing. They're 10 millimeter bolts, small ones, two of them. Almost all these oil engines have them, even the bigger ones. So, when the engine starts to cut it off, stick your finger in there and push down. Hear that? That cuts off the fuel. So when, uh, if you look at this, you see a little uh, needle there? That's pushing the fuel and uh, cutting it off. So when you engage it with 12 volts, it pushes in. That allows the valve to move back out and it cuts the fuel on. Okay. And right next is we're going to remove this belt here. And the reason for removing the belt is so that the water pump doesn't turn. You don't want the pump to turn if there's no water in it because then you'll damage the pump and it will be of no use to you. The engine will overheat. So it will take this one here, and this is a 12 millimeter. That's one. Just loosen it up there. And the one in the bottom right here is usually a 14 millimeter. And we'll loosen that one up from the back. I don't know if we can see that. There we go. Just kind of push it. And it's moving. So we're going to get another wrench, a backup wrench, so it won't move. Okay, so I put a little wrench on the front here. And I put one in the back. See, it's got a backup wrench there. And I just loosen this one up. No need to take it off completely. And then you kind of push the alternator in. And then just remove the belt. That's all you got to do. Just take it off and Sit to the side so it doesn't cause any trouble. Okay, so now you're ready to operate. So now when the engine turns, the pump won't turn, so you won't run the engine dry. Okay, the next thing is this hydraulic pump right here. So, what we are going to do, we do not want to run it dry either, if you want to save it. So, let me get some hoses together, and I'll be right back. Okay, um, now we already have the fuel connected, ready to go. We have the return line, got the feed line going into here. We remove the fuel injection solenoid, fuel uh, shutoff solenoid, so that the fuel can go through manually. These lines are loose, so we can bleed out the air. We also uh, have this hose here going to the hydraulic pump for the 
we don't want to take it off because we're going to use it so I'm going to put in some oil so it doesn't run dry I'm going to throw in some hydraulic oil it's going to shoot out of there when it starts to crank but we'll only let it run for a few seconds just to see if it's going to work or not this is just so that the pump does not run dry and to protect the pump because we're going to want to keep it okay that'll do for now and then we disconnected the uh, the belt here so that the pump would not turn we didn't want to damage the uh, water pump so now we are ready to to get her going to give it a, a crank okay let me uh, find a wire for preheating and for starting we'll be right back okay what I'm going to do now if you see this little screw right here there's one two three those are the glow plugs those heat the engine block to make it easier to start so I'm gonna put a wire from here over to here the positive on the battery that will send 12 volts to each one of these and they will get hot and heat the engine up and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wire from here to there to crank the engine and also I'm going to connect this wire to engage the fuel pump. The positive wire here, negative wire here, that cuts on the fuel pump. Oops. And then you want to check, see that's the return wire, return hose right there. So you pull this one out. If you got fuel coming back, that means it's working. It's getting fuel up to the top of the injectors. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to crank it until fuel comes out of each one of these here. Each one of these lines. When fuel comes out of each one of these, then we'll know we got it primed all the way to the top. Okay. Let's give it a shot. We'll put the uh, positive wire on. Negative wire on. These are the wires for the uh, fuel pump. These are for the electric fuel pump. Want to make sure we got flow coming out. That's good. And then we're going to jump off the starter here. that engine well looks like uh, we got lucky on this one this engine works great I didn't find any problems with it supposedly it was a core and it was no good they bought a new engine and they took this one out and put in a new one and I was able to get it for 150 on the marketplace and uh, I think if I change the oil, uh, change the fuel filters, clean it up real good, maybe change the valve stem seals, uh, we'll be able to use it. I'm going to put it on a water well drilling machine that has two gasoline engines. One for the drill and the lift, and the other gasoline engine is for the water pump. I'm going to remove both of those gasoline engines and install this one Kubota V1105 with uh, control valves to operate the pump the lift and the drill. Stay tuned for that. Please, please subscribe to my channel. I've got some good projects coming up. Also got this little Kubota V500 here. I'm gonna put in a little Kubota diesel engine in it instead of take out the Kawasaki. I got a lot of good things coming up. Please subscribe to my channel and like.